Welcome to the Six Miles to Supper podcast. I'm your host, Kayla Cox, and I've lost over 80 pounds with intermittent fasting six days a week, eating whatever I wanted at my meals, taking a cheat day every Sunday, and walking six miles a day. And I'm here to help you on your weight loss journey. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the middle path for weight loss. And I'm going to start this podcast by reading a quote to you from Blaise Pascal, who was a philosopher in the 17th century. Um, He was also kind of a theologian, I guess, and also a mathematician and a scientist. So he did a lot. He says, limited in every respect, we find this intermediate state between two extremes reflected in all our faculties. Our senses can perceive nothing extreme. Too much noise deafens us. Too much light dazzles When we are too far or too close, we cannot see properly. An argument is obscured by being too long or too short. Too much truth bewilders us. I think this is so important to understand on the weight loss journey. This is contrary to so much weight loss advice out there. So many people you know, kind of beat the drum that, oh, you got to be really extreme. Like your diet kind of has to be extreme if you want it to work. Uh, Your exercise has to be extreme. Uh, And and it always seems like there's just this push for people to be very dogmatic and very, very strict. And what I found was that's just not the right way to do it as far as long-term results. I did that for so long, you know, when from the time I was a kid until the time I was almost 30, that was my philosophy when it came to weight loss was, you know, you've got to be strict. You've got to like do the things you hate, eat the things you hate, and then you'll be be down at a good weight. But what I finally learned was it's better to try to take the middle path for weight loss. It's a slower path. And and it, so you, you don't get those extreme results really fast, but I have found it's more sustainable for the long term. I'm, I'm talking years and years. It's it's a lot better um, and it's a lot more enjoyable too. So in this episode, I'm, I'm going to talk about six different areas uh, that you can kind of examine yourself to see, you know, are you on like a middle path? Or are you being a bit extreme? And I'll talk about my experiences, give you some examples, because man, I have, I've lived on both extremes of this. But again, I always try to keep on that middle path. I've really tried tried since 2016 to be on that middle path, and it has been so much more sustainable and enjoyable. So the first area, and this is the first area for a reason, because I do believe it is the most important part of the weight loss journey, and that is consistency. And, you know, and I do stress that a lot. But every time I stress that, I kind of have this hesitancy because there is such a thing as too much consistency. Now, what does too much consistency look like? To me, that is white knuckling. That is when you are so scared that you're going to mess up, you know, that you're going to break that streak. That, that maybe is a sign that you're being a bit too consistent. You're a little bit extreme over there because life throws things at you. And sometimes things happen, you know, like you go on vacation or, uh, you know, you, you have a kid's, you know, one of your kid's birthday parties is during your fasting window, you know, things like that come up. And I think it's really important to learn how to say, okay, this may not be a consistent thing to do. I mean, this is going to be a little bit outside the bounds of consistency right now, but this is something I want to do in order to have long-term sustainability. And, you know, when I look back on my own weight loss journey, I do see that like in 2016, I, I think I did have a bit too much consistency in one area, and that was with my steps. That year, from, from like January to uh, late November, that's when I finally started maintenance. But before that, when, when I was losing weight, I had a strict rule for myself, and that was I'm going to be consistent with these steps. And, I, you know, that was one thing I could control on the weight loss journey. And so I said, I'm going I'm to do this. I'm going to really strict seven days a week. I'm doing six miles a day. And I did. You know, I was very consistent with that. Um, but what I saw was, you know, after a while, that can take a toll as far as just on your kind of, it can get old, basically, you know, um, it can feel a bit difficult. And so what I found was it's better to moderate that just a little bit. And so in maintenance, uh, I started to kind of experiment like, okay, you know, I still want to be consistent with my steps, but what can that look like to, to make it so that it's a little like I can relax a little bit. 
I found for myself that, you know, as I went along, even though I was really, really consistent with my steps, I did learn the lesson in 2016 of I need to have a kind of a, a code for myself, a plan for going off plan. And so, you know, that's what I would try to do. Like, okay, I want to be consistent, but yet I want to give myself, you know, some times where I will allow myself, you know, to eat, even if it was in my normal fasting window, what are the, you know, different parameters? Like if my kid uh, specifically requests that I have lunch with them, like says, hey, mom, will you have lunch with me? You know, I'm going to do that. On the other hand, though, you can let it get to the point where you just have too little consistency. You know, you have, you're just not doing the plant. You're not doing anything consistently. And what's that going to do? It's going to lead to poor results. You have to do these things, you know, on a consistent basis. And when I say consistent, you know, for me, I try to be a B plus student. So I shoot for like 85, you know, percent consistency. Like, you know, when I'm doing my walking and my fasting, that's six days a week. So six days a week out of seven, I am being on plan, I'm being consistent. And again, you know, I do take occasional, you know, days off for like holidays and things like that. So, you know, but when you work it all out, I would say I'm about a B plus student. And for me, that's just the right amount. Now, you may find that you need, you know, a bit more consistency than that or a bit less. But ultimately, it's about just finding for yourself, where is that middle path? I think it's a good idea if you're kind of like, well, well, how do I know? Am I being consistent enough? A couple of markers that always work for me are to see, you know, am I having results? So, you know, in the case of if I'm trying to lose weight, for me, that would be, am I? losing weight? And is the scale trending down over time? On the other hand, in maintenance, okay, what what does that mean? Because maintenance is a little bit easier. Uh, maybe you're staying in a range. Uh, so for me, I say, okay, well, am I maintaining in that range that I want to be at? And if I am, then I say, okay, I'm being consistent enough with my plan. And I want to stress to you as we go through each of these uh, areas that when when you're finding that middle path, it's a process. And and I think really, you know, I hate to burst your bubble, but I think it's a lifelong process. Uh, what I've come to determine is, you know, life changes sometimes. Uh, I can just think back in my own weight loss journey, how much my life has changed just from, you know, when I was losing weight the first time into maintenance. And then after I started, uh, you know, my YouTube channel and, and, and this podcast, a lot of things have changed. My daily schedule has been completely different at various times. But what has stayed consistent is that I'm, you know, always looking for that middle path. And also, you know, I want to encourage you, too, that as you're finding the middle path, you're probably going to bump up on both sides of the spectrum. So, you know, when you're first working on consistency, you're probably going to, you know, be too consistent at certain points. You're going to get too strict, you know, with yourself and and it's going to be a little bit too hard. And then you'll maybe will kind of go the other direction and you're going to make it a little bit uh, where you're not consistent enough. And then you're going to, you know, go back the other way. But eventually, you know, if you just keep, you know, keep uh, reminding yourself that this is a process and you're just learning, then you'll eventually find that middle path where you really are doing well on the weight loss journey. Now, the second area, which I think is so very important, uh, but that, you know, again, I always do uh, hesitate sometimes when I encourage people to track, uh, you know, things. I, I'm afraid people might take it to an extreme. Um, but the thing is, you, you can have too much data, you know, in, especially in today's world with today's technology and with all the information we have. I mean, there are so many things that you could track. And and if you do track a whole bunch of things, what can happen is it becomes, first of all, very overwhelming. You know, just the amount of, of information that you have available to you, it's just a lot of information. It's hard to synthesize and it's hard to make sense of. But also, you know, if, if all the tracking you're doing becomes burdensome, then you're probably not going to stick with it anyway. So, so it's, you know, it's got those kind of negatives to it. On the other hand, you can be in a situation where you don't have enough data. Maybe you don't have any data. Maybe you're not tracking anything at all. And, you know, like if, if you're wanting to lose weight, but you are never getting on the scale or you're only getting on the scale, you know, once in a blue moon, you're just not going to have very much data to work with. And it's going to be really hard to stick with your plan, in my experience. 
I, you know, in my experience, I've done both. You know, I when I was first trying to do uh, intermittent fasting, I would say I was in too much data mode. I was, um, you know, like tracking uh, macros. I was counting calories. I was also uh, uh, paying attention, uh, like my my heart rate all the time. I was uh, weighing myself. I was measuring myself. You know, it was just a lot of stuff to keep track of, and it was it was too much for me. So what I found for myself was, you know, I, I decided, okay, for me, the just right amount of data is, uh, you know, I track my steps and I track uh, my weight and I keep track of my seven day average. So that's just a calculation on a spreadsheet that automatically happens as I log my weight in. And for me, that's easy to do. I can easily step on the scale first thing in the morning. You know, the whole process takes about 15 seconds probably from, you know, stepping on the scale, stepping off putting that number in my app and then going about my day. So I can easily do that. I can be consistent with it. And it gives me the information that I'm looking for. For me, the thing that I am focused on, and it may be different from you based on your situation. For me, the number I pay attention to is my weight. And I, you know, and you know, I pay attention to my general well-being and things like that. But basically, I'm concerned with that number on the scale. Like, okay, am I in a healthy weight range? And the scale tells me that data that I'm looking for. Now, if you know if the thing that's most important to you is your blood pressure, well, then you know keeping track of your blood pressure would be the right number to track. And it's the same with reviewing your data too. You can take it to either extreme. If you if you're never looking at the big picture, uh, then you're probably missing out on some good insights. But if you're always looking at your spreadsheet and you're just obsessed with it in daily or multiple times a day, you're looking at your spreadsheet. That's probably too much. You're going to be overwhelmed with the data and you're going to overanalyze. So again, just focus on finding that middle path that's right for you. Now the third area is in the amount of rules you have for yourself. Now, rules are important. They are the structure that you have. Basically, it's your plan. You know, your plan is just made up of some rules that you've made your, for yourself. But you can have too many rules. And I think this is something, I mean, this was something certainly for me. I Like in the beginning, I would try to have way too many rules, like way, way too many rules for myself, things I was working on and, and things like that. And it was too complicated. And the thing about having too many rules is it can be really confusing. You know, if you have just tons of rules for yourself, you know, like I'm trying to eat this many uh, carbs and this many uh, grams of protein, but on this day, I take it easy and I kind of just eat whatever I want. But then on Thursday, Thursdays, I do, you know, this type of fasting, but on Friday, here's what I do, you know, that can get uh, overwhelming and confusing, because it, it really means you got to really be on top of so many things in your day. And the thing is, life is chaotic, a lot of times, uh, you know, you get tired, you get stressed out. And so the if you have that many things that you're trying to keep track of, it can be difficult to stick to your plan. On the other hand, you can get to the point where you have too few rules. You know, maybe you have none at all, and you're just kind of being vague about, well, I'm just trying to lose weight. Well, that's probably not going to work very well for you. I tried that technique, um, and it did not work well for me at all. Uh, back in 2014, really, uh, I was learning a lot, but I was really just like really resistant to having any rules because of my bad experiences in the past, always being on a diet. I didn't want to be on a diet. And so I was like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to like eat less. And that was just kind of like this vague little thing. And that was like going to be my one rule. And I lost no weight with that one little rule because it wasn't specific enough for me. It didn't put enough boundaries on things. I probably, in hindsight, when I really think about it, I ate less food at meals probably, but I also ate a lot more snacks. So, um, and that's not good, but I was also not weighing myself either. So uh, so again, I was just kind of, I, I have vacillated between these two extremes, but once I, you know, said, okay, uh, having too many rules, that's bad. Having no rules, that's also bad. What can I do? What can I, you know, kind of get in that, that sweet spot where I have some rules. And, you know, for me, it was just a few bullet points. I mean, I tried to make it dead simple for myself because I am, I'm serious. I just need that kind of simplicity in my life. Um, I said, okay, I'm doing intermittent fasting six days a week, cheat day on Sunday, walk six miles a day. I mean, three bullet points really. And that was the, the basic plan. 
And that worked for me. Uh, so I would encourage you to look at your rules, like really, you know, jot them down, because if it's a, it, it may be that you have a lot of rules that you've kind of made for yourself, but you're not really sticking to them. So, you know, maybe you make a list and, and then you can ask yourself like, okay, is this really what I want uh, my, what, what I want my rules to be? Uh, or do I need to, you know, winnow down? Or do I need to maybe add a couple of rules because I'm, I don't have enough structure? Now, the fourth area is food. And uh, this area, of course, you know, when you have too much food, and this is, you know, generally speaking, if if you're having a weight problem, it's because you're eating too much food. I mean, that's, I, I was so resistant to that idea. I mean, that was something I fought so hard against in my mind. Like, I'm not eating too much. I don't eat more than other people. And the truth of it was, when I, when I really started to lose weight, I started to see, yeah, I'm, I was eating too much. I was eating really big portions. I was eating really fast. I was snacking a lot. And, um, and, and just taking bites here and there. Maybe not even just sitting down and having a snack, but just grazing throughout the day. And once I stopped all that and really and really started to do intermittent fasting, that's when the weight started to come off. So I, got, I finally got that connection in my head, like, okay, it really does have to do with the amount of food I'm eating. So of course, if you're eating too much food, you're going to gain weight. And that's a pretty easy one to suss out. But if you're eating too little, because see, here's the trap, right? Um, you may be eating you know, a certain amount of food and, and you're doing intermittent fasting. And then you think, well, since this is working, uh, making it more extreme will be even better. So you cut down on the meal size and, and you, uh, you know, try to try to maybe eat uh, smaller and smaller portions or make your fasting time longer and longer and longer. And then what can happen, though, is it's going to backfire. Uh, you know, for one thing, it's just going to be difficult. It's going to be kind of miserable, probably. Um, you know, I love fasting, but it, it can be taken to an unhealthy extreme. Uh, and also, you know, you're probably going to start to feel uh, weak and tired overall uh, if you're not eating enough. And and again, that goes back and makes it more difficult. And then, you know, round and round we go. It's like, okay, it's more difficult. I don't want to do this. I'm getting frustrated. I'm getting in a hurry. I just want this to be over. And then what happens is you just quit entirely. So instead, just look for that, you know, finding that right amount of food. And for me, th there's just this sweet spot. And I think everyone can find it. It's just a process. And, and it is, you know, again, I want to point out that it, it really is a process that you really have to be patient with because uh, there are so many factors. Uh, how much you move during the day will make it so that, you know, certain nights, you know, maybe it's like a plate and a half of spaghetti <laughs> would be like if I was doing OMAD, like, OK, a plate and a half spaghetti. Although I know that's really vague, too, because it depends on the size of the plate and it depends on what kind of sauce you got. And is there meat in that sauce? And if so, what kind of meat? So that's why I don't tend to tell you guys like, OK, and here's what I ate today and here's what I'm going to eat tomorrow. Um but, you know, finding that amount, like how much do you really need to eat? And I've found that if you just pay attention, uh, you know, to how you feel after the meal, do you feel overly full? You probably ate a little bit too much. And if if your weight is staying uh, stuck, uh, uh, like maybe you're feeling overfill and, you know, your weight is not trending down, you're probably eating a bit too much. But but then it, there's this other side of that line where if you're not eating enough, then you're hungry all day the next day. And, you know, it's just kind of a uh, difficult feeling. And, you know, maybe you're losing weight, but the, that streak's not going to last very long because it feels too difficult. And when it feels too difficult, it's going to be a lot easier to quit or to, oh, I'm just going to take today off because it's just, you know, it's too, it's, I don't like feeling hungry all day. I mean, who does, right? So um, trying to get to that point where you really do feel satisfied and full, um, but not overly so, and then uh, making it just fine until your eating window opens back up the next day. That, to me, is the sweet spot. That's what you're looking for. And it varies. It's a learning process based on the type of food, the amount of food, your activity level during the day, and uh, your stress levels. I mean, there's just so much that goes into it. But you can find it. It just takes time. And it takes a lot of, you know, uh, self-awareness, I think, and uh, just being willing to, to, to learn the process.
The next area is in you know movement, exercise. Uh, this can, is just another example of where you can do too much, too little, but I think just the right amount is what you're looking for. Um, you know, when you're when you're exercising too much, lots of things can happen. One is you know you could get injured. Uh, I certainly <laughs> did this back in uh, 2015. I injured my back because I was trying to do too much. I was trying to lift too heavy again because I was you know trying to rush, trying to get faster, better results all the time. And, um, but also, you know, even, even when your body isn't suffering, it can make your relationship suffer too. You know, like if you're spending hours upon hours in the gym, but you also have a husband and kids, I mean, that's not going to work well, right? So you kind of have to balance that out and say, okay, what's a reasonable amount of time uh, to exercise? You know, you want to do some, but not too much. And, um, and again, this goes back to what does your day look like already? You know, what kinds of commitments do you have? Um, and then and basing it uh, off of all of that, you know, because, again, uh, you know, it might be different. The amount of time that would be good and, and kind of a middle path would be different for someone who's, you know, got a full time job. Plus, they take care of, you know, an aging parent and, you know, they have all these other commitments. You know, maybe uh, maybe a smaller amount of time is the most middle path, whereas somebody who has a more free schedule, you know, it, you could do more. Uh, but just looking at your own individual life. On the other hand, if you don't move at all, <laughs> uh, this is not good, right? Um, and, you know, I, I do want to say here, I have certainly uh, seen and talked to people who do no exercise at all like they and now they may be kind of an active person as far as maybe their job keeps them kind of moving all day but they don't go exercise like they don't go out and exercise and they have maintained a healthy weight I mean lost down to a, um, a healthy weight and are maintaining it without exercise um, but the overarching thing that I've seen in all the interviews and stuff that I've done with people the general theme seems to be that exercise helps at least just in the mental uh, health aspect. It's a stress reliever. It keeps people going uh, when they are, you know, just kind of uh, maybe the scale is plateauing, you know, but the exercise keeps them feeling good. And for me, you know, I, I walk and I walk at a slow pace, but um, I do it consistently. And um, I found that for myself, it certainly helped me to stay more consistent and to just feel better. I don't feel stiff. And I like being able to just keep up with my kids and, and uh, play with them and, and, not feel tired all the time. But ultimately for me, it's about the mental health. Now, the last area is confidence. And this is a tough one too, because, you know, I encourage people to have confidence and, and it is important, but there is such a thing as too much confidence. I have certainly had to learn the lesson on the weight loss journey that you should never get too confident, too prideful, because, you know, things happen in life. So many times I've thought to myself, oh, okay, like I, I never stress eat anymore. <laughs> right. And then, and then what will happen is I will, in hindsight, I can see like, oh, you know what? I was actually stress eating <laughs> or, you know, like I was, I was really eating fast. And, and why was I doing that? Cause I was stressed out or, you know, just thinking I have certain things you know, like handled and I never have to think about it anymore. And then sure enough, things will, will happen again. I'm like, ah, oh, am I still dealing with this issue? And you know, yeah, I am. So the thing is, you know, if you're too confident and, and you just, you, you have it in your head that you will not fail at all ever, you know, you're eventually going to fall. You're, you're going to, you know, mess up, screw up in some kind of way. And what I found for myself is that if I'm feeling too confident, uh, almost like prideful or arrogant, um, then it, it's harder for me to recover from that. You know, like, um, and this was something I really dealt with uh, back in the past, like, uh, I would say probably like 2015. And previous to that, especially like when I was on diets, when I was in my you know, younger years. Um, but I would be so prideful. And it'd be like, as soon as you know, I fell off the bandwagon, I <laughs> uh, it was the diet's fault. It was, you know, like I would just blame everyone else. I wouldn't really take a hard look at myself and say, huh, you know, maybe you just don't have uh, the right mindset or maybe, uh, you know, you just can't depend on that willpower that you think is so good, that you think is so great. Uh, maybe you don't have enough willpower for that plan and really just being honest with myself. 
So too much confidence, I think, can ironically lead to quitting a lot of times. But on the other hand, uh, too little confidence is certainly a thing. And I would say most people who have struggled with their weight, we also tend to struggle with self-confidence. And maybe maybe it's not, you know, in all areas, but with weight loss, we just have this, you know, like, oh, we just don't feel confident about it. And what can that can do is that you never try. You never really, you know, put your heart and soul into, okay, I really believe in myself. I really believe I can lose the weight and I'm going to just keep trying until I figure it out. So you do have to have some confidence. But I I think the best, you know, middle path is to have confidence, have enough confidence to get out there and and really try and to not give up and to be really stubborn about that. But then also have enough humility to say like, okay, I messed up. I messed up. So um, what happened? And, And how can I improve in the future? Because what you'll find so many times is, you know, when you have that difficult moment, because difficult moments will certainly happen, you know, like uh, overeating is one thing, stress eating is another thing, uh, you know, uh, just if you gain weight or, or, or if you hit a really hard plateau, uh, it can be difficult to to just be kind of humble and, and be honest with yourself and look at your, your actions honestly and, and, and to evaluate. But that's so crucial in, in having weight loss success is the ability to just observe yourself and observe your actual actions and be honest and say, oh, wow, huh, you know, I have not been getting my steps in. <laughs> like I have this goal and I have not been consistent with that. Or, you know, I said I'm going to fast, uh, but my eating window is going to be from 12 to 6 every day. But you know what? I've been eating, you know, early some days and I've been closing my window later some days. And 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 then if you can do that, that's great. But the, the, the problem comes when you're not really willing to look at that. You just say, well, I'm doing this and it's not working. I would urge you to just delve a little deeper, you know, have enough confidence in yourself to, to really be humble and, and to have some humility and, and, and look and see uh, what's going on. So to sum up, you know, it's all about finding the middle path. That middle path, it's hard to find it because, you know, you do kind of get off in one extreme or the other. And that's just normal. And again, I want to to emphasize that this is not something that I've got it licked and it's just like, huh, I, I am always on the middle path and I never get too extreme one way or the other. It certainly happens to me. I have times where I am too lax with my rules. I have other times when I'm a bit too strict with my rules. I have uh, sometimes when I'm too consistent. I have other times when I'm not consistent enough. And, and, and it's all been about, you know, finding the middle path and then just realizing like, if I veer off of it, okay, I just need to get right back on it and keep going forward. So I hope this episode has helped you and I'll see you in the next one. Do you want to lose the weight without getting rid of the foods you love and that you know you'll go back to eating again anyway? My book, The Laid Back Guide to Intermittent Fasting, teaches you how to practice intermittent fasting so that you lose the weight sustainably and keep it off for good. You can get the audiobook read by me for free when you sign up for your 30-day trial of Audible. The link is in the show notes.